where Columbia University School of Journalism is recognizing some of the most impactful works in news reporting with last night's annual DuPont Columbia Awards. The 16 honorees, including reports, podcasts, and documentaries, covered a wide range of topics, from the horrors of Russia's attacks on Ukraine in the documentary, 20 Days in Mariupol, to reporting on the maternal health crisis for black women in the United States in the film Aftershock. Joining us now, the Dean of Columbia University School, School of Journalism, Jelani Cobb. He is also a staff writer at The New Yorker. Um, well, what an incredible uh, set of content here that was honored last night. Um, I think, first of all, talk about why it's important once in a while to take a moment and honor reporters who have either put their lives on the line or stayed at it to uncover stories. Well, you know, Mika, uh, you know this as well as anyone, that uh, journalism takes, you know, its hits. You know, we get criticized frequently, and uh, when we get something wrong, uh, people let us know. Uh, and, and even in this moment where we look at all the difficulty and the layoffs and so on, it's easy to get uh, really a kind of gloomy perspective about what it is that we do. Uh, but that's what makes these awards so special. Uh, you know, we honor uh, just a sliver of the excellence that we see in broadcast journalism each year. Uh, and, you know, this year was just stunning, uh, you know, the caliber of work uh, that we had to choose from uh, and the caliber of work that we ultimately honored on the stage last night. I'm glad you brought up what a tough week it has been for the industry, whether it's right. the Los Angeles Times or Sports Illustrated or Business Insider and, and so many and so many more, and all doing really important work. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the reporting you did uh, on it last night. I know it was a terrific evening up there on campus, um, including the local TV stations reporting about the shooting in Evaldi. Yeah, sure. Uh, so one, one quick point that I'll say is that, you know, the previous segment mentioned uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Yeah. Uh, and so we, uh, you know, were fortunate to honor Ken Burns, really incredible a six-part documentary uh, on the U.S. and the Holocaust. And so that was one of our uh, award recipients last night. Uh, and then the work around uh, Uval Uvalde uh, from the Austin Statesman, uh, which uh, really was at the uh, forefront of uh, breaking the narrative that we had. We were told one thing about police behavior uh, in the midst of that massacre. Uh, and then they just painstakingly pieced together uh, minute by minute what was happening, where the police were located, what was going on in the classroom and so on, and completely uh, dispelled the official version uh, of what the police had been doing. Uh, and uh, when we saw that more than hour long period of, of inaction, uh, in which people were dying, uh, children were dying, teachers were dying. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that work uh, was as, uh, as excellent as it was unsettling. Jelani, tell us a little bit about the team that went into Afghanistan for the frontline documentary there. It's a country that's incredibly hard to access. And this was a female Iranian-British yeah. journalist who went in at a time when it, it, it's really hard for women in Afghanistan to leave the house almost, let alone start asking questions and start filming. How, how did they do it? How did they put this documentary together and what did they find? You know, you know, we we say this all the time. You know that people risk their lives in order to bring uh, information to the public, uh, and this was just a sterling example of it. And you know the resourcefulness that people had to deploy, you know, uh, stashing cameras in the sleeves uh, of uh, their clothing and uh, kind of surreptitio surreptitiously recording. And, uh, and then the women uh, who were interviewed about the conditions uh, under the Taliban who were uh, risking their lives just to talk uh, and, you know, saying explicitly, please tell the world what is happening to us. Uh, and, ah. uh, you, you know, it's, it's just, it, it, having been on the other side of that, the level of responsibility you feel uh, for people uh, when they are willing to die in order to inform the public is just um, humbling. And Jelani, uh, especially with the state of women's health care uh, in decline given the overturning of Roe and other things, 
Um, tell us about Aftershock. Mm -hmm. uh, Aftershock uh, is another uh, you know, really impressive work of journalism as uh, uh, directed by Tanya Lewis Lee uh, and uh, you know, it traced the astounding disparities we see uh, in maternal health care uh, and particularly maternal mortality uh, with black women uh, being far and away more likely to die as a result of childbirth. Uh, and you know, there's a kind of contemporary point to this, which is that uh, in the places where we saw uh, the highest disparities in maternal uh, health care, maternal mortality, uh, we also have seen the strictest uh, abortion bans uh, come into effect. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we are likely to be compounding uh, an already terrible uh, problem uh, with public policy. Uh, and so this film really gives us a view uh, into uh, what happened in, uh, with two particular families and how uh, they are unfortunately grieving uh, women who should still be here with us today.